Hello, this is PG. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing Dragon's Dogma 2. The game is on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. Dragon's Dogma 2 is an action role-playing game developed by Capcom. In Dragon's Dogma, you play as the Arisen, a chosen one who must embark on an epic quest to fulfill your destiny. Okay, gameplay. Well, first things first, you've got to create your own unique character. And the character creator is quite possibly the best example that I've ever seen. Given enough time and patience, you can pretty much create anything you desire. As well as detailed face sculpting, lots of hairstyles, there's a really good tattoo and scar system, and you also get to choose your starting vocation before you head off on your adventure. It's also worth mentioning that you can download the character creator for free, even if you do not own the game. So if you enjoy things like that, give it a whirl because it's really good fun. Okay, so once you start your quest, it's the usual rags to riches type of experience. You start out as a slave and have to find your feet in an unfamiliar world. You'll be exploring vast and dangerous locations, engaging in fluid and entertaining combat and completing main or side quests. Speaking of the combat, it's a lot of fun with some varied enemies, interesting terrain which has an impact and some really epic moments. Perhaps it's not as tactical as some games, but it's definitely entertaining, it's definitely epic, especially when you're taking on the larger boss type characters. You can use light or heavy attacks, there's a blocking and parrying system, and you've also got these uh, special attacks that you can deploy, but you have to unlock them and assign them, akin to something like the Diablo series, you choose what each button combination does. One combat issue that I did experience though was the camera, in particular when you're fighting very large characters, often near buildings, the camera can be absolute chaotic, but you know, you get through it, it's just a bit of a pain in the backside. But combat, it's not something you have to do on your own. You're not alone in the fight, you've got your trusty pawns to aid you. But what is a pawn, you ask? Well. Pawns are beings from another realm who follow the Arisen into battle. They can be summoned at special locations, but you'll also see them wandering around the game world. I see not even the Arisen could resist my charms. Every master I've ever served has favoured different tactics. One party I joined consisted only of ranged specialists. If you like the look of them, you can hire them and they will stay by your side until you either dismiss them or they fall in battle. But thankfully, you also get to create your own main pawn, who essentially becomes your sidekick through the entire adventure. And again, this is where the character creation system really shines through, allowing you to create another unique character. Now, you can have up to three pawns join you. And I have to say, they do add so much depth to the experience with each one having their own traits, character, and even voice lines. And after a few journeys with your Arisen, they will even remember you if you bump into them in a town. Arisen, you've grown even stronger since last we met, haven't you? I can tell at a glance. Another cool feature is your main pawn will feature in other players' worlds. Other players will be able to hire them, take them on adventures, and even rate or gift them based on their performance. Having characters created by other players just randomly wandering your game world, it makes everything feel so much more alive, and it's just a fantastic feature. Now, speaking of the world feeling alive, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a pretty dangerous place to travel through. With enemies waiting to ambush you everywhere on the road, you know, there's harpies who will pick you up and drop you off a cliff, wolves attacking in packs, and goblins who will douse you in oil and set you on fire. And it's this long distance travel, the peril of it. Even with the pawns by your side, it just is such a dangerous thing. And occasionally you will need to have a rest because your stats will start to drop. Now here you can make a fire, you can have a quick chat with your allies, or you can cook a bit of food, you know, one of the beasts you've killed en route. And the cooking cutscenes, dear lord, 
They made me so hungry. My God, look at this deliciousness. Our master was ruthless in command, yet can't. Are you particularly fond of this place, Arisen? We have made camp here several times now. So long as we are safe and warm, I care not where we rest. Now the road, as I said, has other travellers passing by. You'll find traders now and again if you need to offload your loot. And every time you have to cross vast parts of the map, you do feel like you're in the Fellowship in Lord of the Rings. It's got that epic feel. But you might be thinking, well, surely, PG, surely there's fast travel, right? Well, yes, there is fast travel, but it's not what you think. It's not unlimited. To fast travel, you need two things. You need a port crystal, which essentially acts as your destination. You also need a token. This is like currency. It teleports you to that crystal, but then the token disappears. So it's finite. You've got to pick and choose when you use it, as well as where you place the port crystals that you can get your hands on. Now, due to the limited fast travel, inevitably, you're going to get stuck out in the vast landscape. You might even get stuck, low health, no allies, uh, stamina's terrible. And this is where there is an annoyance with the game with the auto save system. The game only saves your game twice. Once when you rest at an inn, once as an auto save. And the auto saves often happen immediately just before you're having an absolute nightmare. And I think they really need to add manual saving files, like several files that you can save manually. So if you need to go back to a certain point, you can, but they don't have it right now. So storyline wise, what did I say? You're the chosen one. And the main quests, I'd say they're pretty good on the whole. Maybe the last two or three are the best. They're just unforgettable. Can't say much more than that, but they're just truly magnificent. But fear not, the side quests, there's loads of them, and they offer a real insight into the game world, lots of secrets, and I'd say lots of replay value as well, because the core story, if you just followed the core story, you're not gonna see most of the game map. Another aspect that I think is worth pointing out are the kind of mythical boss creatures from trolls, cyclops, dragons, and even a Medusa laying in wait for your band of adventurers. It's really, if you, if you like mythology, you'll love it. So finally on gameplay, just a couple of other points. Money, money can be an issue in this game just like in real life, but everything in this game, my God, it costs a fortune. It means you'll just become a mule out on the road, hoovering up everything you can get your hands on, loot, scavenge, sell. Then when you've got 40 grand, you can buy a hat. Wonderful. Dear Lord, what happened to, what happened to this? Is there like an economic crisis in Dragon's Dogma? Bloody hell. And finally, the game has, it's got DLCs and it's got a lot and they're quite weird. You know, they're key quest items available to buy with real money, which really doesn't make any sense because what is the point in playing this game if you're just gonna skip the very basic stuff? That's the whole point of this game. The journey is the adventure. It's not the destination. Okay, visually, lovely game world, very nice vistas, detailed creatures, costumes, weapons, all very good. Uh, the characters again, due to the character creation system, look really nice as well. Um, maybe there's some graphical glitches that I encountered. Like I had this weird glitch when I would hire a pawn and then my graphics settings would reset. And it looks like I'm playing a game in 1990 on a VHS. Um, also on visuals, they have a photo mode, which is nice. Sadly, it's not a good photo mode. You can't even move the camera. Yes, that's correct. You have a photo mode and it's a fixed camera. Well done, eh? What a bloody mess. Anyway, I did a guide for it. If you'd like to see that, check the comments or the description because I'll put a link in there. Sound, music, sound effects, I'd say all of them, very good. The voice acting too, I really liked, especially the pawns uh, voice actors. They really have a sort of heartwarming sense and you really get to feel attached to them. How might I serve you, Arisen? I've not much to say at the moment. Off we go then. There are beasts to be slain. Okay, what is good and bad about the game? The good points. Combat's fun. Character creators the best I've seen. The pawns add character charm and depth to your adventure. The game world feels vast, feels interesting and is dangerous. 
good side quests, and it feels like a living, breathing world with other players' pawns just wandering around. Bad points. The slog of long distance travel can be quite mind numbing at times. Only one game save means you can't have different characters or load at a more convenient time. The core story is far from original and structurally it's a little bit too samey to Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. There are some graphical glitches on the PC which is this version. Uh, the DLC stuff is bizarre and the photo mode is a disaster because who has a fixed camera in a photo mode? Really? Okay, verdict, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a wonderful role-playing game with a great character creation system, an interesting and dangerous game world, and lots of depth if you're prepared to explore. Personally, I love role-playing games, and the thing that makes an RPG great is the ability to lose yourself, not just in the world, not just in the quests, but in the ability to create your own character and be that character. And then you add pawns to that equation, the epic road trips, the dangers that lay in wait, the customization, it just makes for a true role-playing great. Yes, perhaps the journey is better than the destination as I said, but what a journey it is. It is a bit of a slow burner, it will eat up a lot of your time when you're out on the road, but it is worth your time, absolutely. There's always another epic moment just around the corner, another boss fight, a new pawn who will become your trusted ally. Interesting, varied, entertaining, and more importantly, fun. Would I recommend it? You bloody bet I would. I strongly recommend it. And in the 40 hours that I played it, I had an absolute blast. So there you go, that is my review. Scoring, what would I give Dragon's Dogma 2? I would give it nine out of 10. I think it's a very good role-playing game. Please check it out if that is your cup of tea, okay? That's the review, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, you're all welcome. This is PG, signing off. Cheers.